Hello everyone, welcome to RPG videos for developers. In this video, we are going to talk about concurrent rate limit policy in RPG. Myself Anil Sagar, I work at RPG as a principal architect and technology evangelist. Let's get started. Uh, prerequisites, you need an RPG Edge account uh, to follow this tutorial. Please register in enterprise.rpg.com, which is free. In this video, we are going to learn about how to throttle inbound connections of API using RPG API proxy. And also we're going to see how the concurrent rent limit policy works and various use cases. And also we're going to learn about uh, TTL attribute in concurrent rent limit policy and how do we uh, throttle a certain number of inbound connections. Let's get started. I have uh, a happy G edge account here. What we're going to do is we're going to quickly create an API proxy. Uh, I'm going to create a Node.js uh, uh, as a backend uh, API and uh, also it creates an API proxy. I'm going to call it as a concurrent uh, rate limit, concurrent limit uh, uh, proxy, and we are going to use hello world sample. Uh, so authorization will be passed through, no security, and uh, uh, default uh, test environment. We are going to quickly create a proxy along with the Node.js uh, API as a backend. As you can see, we quickly created a proxy and uh, uh, we have an endpoint here. So let's call this endpoint. As you can see, it, it prints hello world and the response is uh, within few seconds. Uh, let's modify this policy a little bit uh, to demonstrate the concurrent late limit policy. So I'm going to add uh, uh, delay to the response uh, uh, of uh, 10 seconds to demonstrate the concurrent rate limit policy. So as you can see, uh, the response will be sent back uh, after uh, 10 seconds. And uh, let's add the concurrent rate limit policy. So uh, the uh, limit to the concurrent rate limit policy is you have to attach the policy to the target uh, endpoint uh, request preflow and also the response preflow. And uh, if you expect any errors, then you have to also include in the default fault rule. So let's uh, attach the concurrent rate limit policy, which comes under traffic management. As you can see, the policy is attached to the request uh, preflow and also to the response preflow. So I'm going to change um, allow the number of connections uh, to uh, one connection and I'm going to set the distributed true so that uh, the counter will be synced across the message process. Uh, TTL is uh, time to leave, which is uh, mandatory, and uh, the default value of shit on TTL is false. We're going to see more about shit on TTL with the various use cases and how it works. So uh, uh, basically to understand the concurrent rate limit policy, uh, it defines how many number of uh, inbound uh, connections uh, can be made to the uh, target endpoint. It defines how many concurrent connections can be active at any certain point of time. Uh, when I say two connections, uh, count two. So at any point of time, only two concurrent connections can be made to the target endpoint and the restriction is applied at the API proxy level. Let's quickly save this uh, uh, proxy and see the concurrent rate limit policy in action. As you can see, I have uh, uh, set a delay of 10 seconds uh, to the policy and also uh, the TTL is 5 seconds. So uh, I just saved the proxy, uh, so let's uh, start the trace and uh, and uh, make few calls, right? So as you can see, I made a uh, call to the proxy which is taking time because the delay is 10 seconds. In the meantime, also making one more concurrent request, right? So. Now, at any point of time, there are two requests uh, that are going to the target server. Since we have it's in the limit, uh, you can see the response uh, from the both the servers. So now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make uh, one three calls uh, uh, within the 10 seconds frame. As you can see, one, two, three. As you can see, uh, uh, all the three calls are in the flight, but the third one is finitely service available because the proxy is request uh, restricted the call uh, uh, to the target server because only two concurrent connections can be active at any point of time. So let's see this uh, one more time, right? Uh, I'm going to make one more one call to 
third. So as you can see, the third one is pi naught three, but uh, uh, the two connections uh, are, which are active and waiting for the response from the server, right? Uh, let's 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 increase uh, the time out a little bit uh, to learn more about how TTL works. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to increase uh, the TTL to twenty, right? And uh, I'm going to maintain. Uh, I mean, I, I, I increase the delay of the API to the 20 and the TTL is still 5 seconds, right? Let's see how TTL works in action, right? Even though server is uh, giving the response after 20 seconds, we are saying the connection time to leave, the counter time to leave is only 5 seconds. So uh, let's make a few more concurrent calls. I'm going to have a few more requests. So I'm going to make the first call, I'm going to make the second call, I'm going to make the third call, I'm going to make the fourth call, I'm going to make the fifth call. So what just happened is first two calls are waiting for the response, third one is uh, final three, fourth one and fifth one is waiting for the response, though we did not receive any response from the first two. So but uh, the delay is uh, 20 seconds. So how come the third call went through? right so that's the question uh, because the rpg api proxy uh, uh, concurrent rate limit policy time to live is five after five seconds it gonna say uh, uh, it gonna expire uh, the uh, counter though we did not receive any response and it allows one more request similarly after five more seconds it'll allow one more request even though the first request is waiting for 20 seconds right so that is the time to live, right? Because the counter will be decremented after five seconds. Even though we not get response from the target backend, we are waiting for 20 seconds, doesn't matter, right? The proxy uh, says the active connection time is five seconds. After the time is done, uh, it's gonna decrement and it's gonna allow one more connection. And it did not uh, uh, put any restrictions on the API. It still allows the API response uh, uh, to go back to the client. Right, so time to leave is basically used when to de decrement the counter and when to allow one more request to the target endpoint. Let's change this uh, to the one and uh, let's say time to leave is uh, now 10 seconds. And I'm going to say straight on TTL true. So, what does it mean? Even though a response comes back within 10 seconds. It still doesn't allow the request to go to the target server, so it will be used uh, if there is if if if, if you want to uh, protect your backend, uh, even though you are, I mean, if you want to streamline the number of concurrent connections to the backend, even though your backend sends back the response within the 10 seconds, still the proxy doesn't allow. So let's see this is an action. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to increase, uh, I'm going to decrease uh, the API response time to one second, and the TTL is 10 and uh, straight on TTL is true. Let's see what happens. So proxy is uh, getting saved, uh, the latest version. And I'm gonna restart the trace to show you what happens. So just to reiterate, uh, so what we have done is uh, we have decrease the API response time to the one second, but the TTL is 10 seconds, right? Let's see what happens, and the count is one. So I'm gonna make the first call, and I'm gonna make the second call, I'm gonna make the third call. Uh, so let's switch on the trace also. Right, uh, so unfortunately, both time stop working. I'm going to show you with the browser. As you can see, the first one succeeded, and the second one, third one resulted in final three. Even though response came back in one second, the API still waits for 10 seconds time to leave, and it doesn't allow the new request, right? So if you keep on making, you'll, you'll, you'll get being, you'll getting final three server. Right. Let's see again the postman. So I'm going to make the first request, which is waiting. I mean, we came back in one second, but the other request it still doesn't allow because 
we said the sit on TTL is 10 seconds. So if you can see the trace here, even though the response came back in one second, the further request failed because the TTL is thin and we have set sit on TTL 10 seconds. So that's about concurrent rate limit policy and how you restrict uh, the number of concurrent connections uh, to the target server. And we are also seeing how the TTL uh, works with uh, concurrent rate limit policy. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, please post on uh, community.rpg.com. Thank you.